Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Arctic Webinar Wednesday. Today's topic is AQ100 ArcFlash Protection Standard Configurations. My name is Xiaoming Ni, Regional Sales Manager for Asian Pacific Area. Before we start the standard configurations, let's have a look AQ100 series product characteristics. The speed is the most significant characteristic of arc protection. The AQ100 system is always fast in operation by adding a, renew a reusable quenching device the total arc fault clearance time is less than 4 milliseconds. In case of uh, arc flash fault in a system with an arc quenching device, you basically remove the source of the arc fault and the power is back on in, in seconds or minutes. The AQ100 Arc Flash Protection System protects the equipment from the consequences of any arc fault. Also, it lowers the PPE category level and reduces the risk for severe in injuries to substation personnel. These series products are built to meet the growing demand in both LV and the MV switch gear and the control gear applications, reasoning from uh, from basic basic standalone to more complex system solution. The detection method is based on light, current, and pressure. Combining those detection methods together can provide the a variety of tripping criterion. The arc fault can be detected by arctic point sensor and the fiber loop sensor. The simplicity is another fundamental characteristic when designing the arc fault protection products. Standard arc, standard arc schemes gives a 100% turnkey solution to customer and the only push button saves a lot of configuration time. The AQ100 series is designed based on the unbeatable experience and tested according to the highest protection relay standards. According to the existing tracking record, the return rate of product is less than 0.1%. The product portfolio contains products for both low voltage and the medium voltage switch gear and the control gear applications. Both low voltage and the medium voltage products have point sensor version and the fiber loop sensor version. AQ110P, AQ101, AQ101D, AQ101S are point sensor units, which supports door mounting requirement, and uh, AQ101D supports thin ray installation requirement. AQ110F and the AQ102 are fiber loop sensor unit. They are door mounted only. In addition of detection and measurement, unit. In AQ100 series, it also has a low voltage arc quenching device and a medium voltage quenching device. Sensor types are light only point sensors, light and pressure point sensors, and the fiber loop sensors. The setting of AQ100 series products is easy and fast. Basically, it needs only two steps. Step one is to set dip switch according to specific application requirement. For AQ110P or AQ110F, it will also need to set overcurrent pickup 
threshold, the user needs to adjust the trimo and switch the current channel LED between lit and unlit. The step two is uh, just press and hold the button for three seconds. Then the configuration is done. Here's a, a little bit more information about the dip switches. For AQ110P, uh, AQ110F has uh, quite identical dip switches. The, there are two dip switch groups, group one on the right side and group two on the left side. In group one, dip switch one to four, they are used for scheme number selections. The first dip weights one, the second dip weights two, the third one weights four, and the fourth one weights eight. The fifth dip switch, for fifth dip switch, A means selective scheme, B means non-selective schemes. Dip switch six to eight are tripping criterion settings. It can be selected as light only trip or light with current trip. In group two, dip switch one, two are used for nominal current settings, one amp setting or five amp setting. Dip switch three is for CBF timer setting, 100 or 150 milliseconds for CBFP logics if the CBFP logics are available in the schemes. Deep switch four is used to enable or deactive CBFP tripping in certain schemes. For example, in AQ110P uh, scheme, uh, standard scheme 0A, T2 CBFP logic can be enabled by this deep switch. Then the, then the fifth one is, uh, is a fiber loop sensor channel. When it is uh, at on position, uh, S5 sensor channel, fiber loop channel is in fiber loop mode. If it's uh, at eliminator or AQD mode, the S5 uh, transmitter port can be used as a triggering signals to the AQD quenching device. This deep switch six is uh, always set to light mode. High-speed output two can be used to trip in, for example, standalone application. It can be set to latch or non-latch mode. The last deep switch eight, uh, which is represents T1 and the T2 trip output signals. So those two, these deep switch can make T1 and the T2 Chip output signals latched or non latched. For AQ101, there's only one dip switch group. Dip switch one to four are for scheme number selections. For example, if the first dip switch is off, the second and the third they are on, and the fourth one is off then you will get a scheme number six. The fifth dip switch is a, is a CBFP timer setting. Uh, eight, uh, 100 milliseconds or 150 milliseconds if CBFP logics are available in the scheme. Number six dip switch is used to latch the trip output signals on T1 and the T2. 
Deep switch 7 and 8 are reserved for tripping criterion settings. The tripping criterion can be light only or light with current. Standard arc schemes or standard arc configurations are fully pre-tested and uh, documented. The setting and the wiring information can be directly found from the AQSAS instruction booklet according to the customer specific application. I will take a few examples for your further understanding. Here I took Standalone application, single bus bar application with main time main structure, single bus bar with multiple incomers and outgoing feeders, and the more complex uh, double bus bar application. Here's uh, the first application is a standalone application. When feeder selective protection is not significantly required, one point sensor unit, like shown on the screen, AQ101, which, we, which is uh, with up to 12 point sensor connection capabilities, can be enough for, the, for protect four feeders. In this case, the tripping criterion is based on light only. Standard scheme zero is selected. Deep switch number eight and seven are set to light only mode. Other deep switches are set to off position. When there's a arc fault happening at the cable compartment, AQ101 will trip all trip contacts. Also, when arc fault happening on the bus bar or at breaker compartment, the scheme zero will trip also trip all trip output contacts. This is a very simple and a straightforward solution. Uh, the second application is a typical main timing uh, single bus bar application. I'm gonna to configure the system with a feeder selectivity. There is a, only one bus with two incomers, multiple outgoing feeders, and one bus section breaker. We will need, to, we will need AQ110P for the incomer and AQ101 for each outgoing feeders. AQ01 point sensors are needed for arc fault detections. AQ110P will use standard scheme 2A, AQ101 will use standard scheme 1. The deep switch settings can be found in this slide. Sensors are respectively installed at cable compartment, circuit breaker compartment and the bus bar compartment. For tripping signals, outgoing feeder AQ110P T1 contacts will trip feeder breakers. The AQ101 T2 contacts will can be trip can be used to trip bus section breakers. Incoma AQ110P T1 contact 
will trip incumbent main breaker. And the T2 is used to trip upstream breakers. About signaling, when AQ110P measures the overcurrent or receives the overcurrent from the other side of incumbent AQ110P, the current signals will be shared to all the rest AQ101 unit. When, when bus bar or breaker compartment detects arc fault, the light signal will be sent to AQ110P in order to trip incumbent main breaker. In this case, the master trip will be will let all AQ101 trip their own circuit breaker. Let's have a look some uh, examples in this application. When arc fault happening at the cable outgoing cable compartment, when incumbent measures the overcurrent, the overcurrent signals are sending out from the binary output one to other side AQ110P. Meanwhile, the high speed output one is sending overcurrent signals to all connected AQ101 units. At this time, when arc fault happened at outgoing cable compartment, the feeder AQ, the 40 feeder AQ101 receive overcurrent and light signals from the sensor channel. It makes the trip. In this case, uh, it's only it it only need to trip the outgoing feeders. That's we so called feeder selective. Then, let's have a look when arc fault at bus bar compartment. In this case, current is measured by other side incomer AQ110P. The overcurrent signal are sent out from the AQ110P to another side must AQ110P unit. And uh, both high speed output one will send overcurrent signals to all the rest AQ101 unit. When there's arc fault happened at bus bar compartment, the light signal will send out from the AQ101 unit to AQ110P binary input two in order to trip the incomer main breaker. Then, at the same time, the high speed output two sends out the master trip signal to all the connected AQ101 units in order to trip all the feeder breakers and the bus section breaker. When arc fault is at incumbent cable compartment, in this case, the current measurement is not available and uh, we only trip incomer main breaker and uh, incomer upstream breaker. Uh, the third application is single bus bar with multiple incomers. There are multiple incomers and the multiple outgoing feeders. The configuration for this uh, single bus bar with multiple incomers is we are 
We also use full selective protection scheme for this uh, case. For this case, AQ110P units are for incomers, AQ101 for AQ for outgoing feeders, and uh, AQ01 for the arc fault detections. Standard scheme 2A and 4A are configured to AQ110P. And the scheme, uh, standard scheme 1 of AQ101 unit is used for outgoing feeder units. So sensors are also located in each compartment. Cable compartment, breaker compartment, a bus bar compartment. AQ101 T1 will trip outgoing feeder breakers. AQ110P T1 will trip incomer main breakers. And uh, AQ110P T2 will use to trip incomer upstream breakers respectively. The signaling between the units are quite identical to those in main time main solution. The current signal is sent from AQ110P to all connected AQ11 unit. Light signal can be sent from AQ101 to AQ110P when arc fault occurs on bus bar or at breaker compartment. And also in this case master trip is used to, to let all AQ101 trip their own feeder breakers. So when arc fault occurs at cable compartment, the current is measured it's measured by the incomer AQ110P. And uh, the AQ110P high speed output one is sending the overcurrent signals to all connected AQ101 units. Then arc fault happened at cable compartment. In this case, we only need to trip outgoing feeder breaker. When arc fault at uh, circuit breaker compartment, the overcurrent is detected by AQ110P. The current uh, signal will be sent out from the high speed output one to all connected AQ101 unit. Then arc fault happened at uh, circuit breaker compartment. The light signal will be sent out to the AQ110P in order to trip the incomer circuit breaker. Then the AQ110P will send out master trip signals via its high speed output 2 to all of the AQ101 unit and other AQ110P unit. In this case, all the connected feeders and uh, incomers circuit breakers will be open. When arc fault happening on the bus bar, which is quite similar as the fault at the circuit breaker. When current is measured by any incomers, in this case, I take the most right-hand right side incomer as an example. It measures the overcurrent and send the overcurrent signals via its high-speed output one to the most left-hand side AQ110P. 
the AQ110P will send overcurrent signals to all the AQ101 units. When arc fault happened on the bus bar, the light signal will be sent out from the binary output to the left-hand side AQ110P binary input too, in order to trip the incomer circuit breaker. Meanwhile, the high-speed output too will send out the master trip signals to the rest of the units. So in this case, all the circuit breakers are open. The last example is a solution for double bus bar. The switch gear contains two incomers and uh, multiple outgoing feeders. There are three bus segments. One is the left-hand side main one bus and the right-hand side the main two bus. And uh, there's a common reserve bus bar. Between two main bus bar, it says uh, there is a bus section breaker. Between the main two bus bar and the reserve bus, there's a bus coupler breakers. Bus coupler breaker. In this example, I I connect the incomer one to the main one bus and the incomer two to the reserve bus. In this uh, double bus bar application, we will again use AQ110P for incomer, but also we will use AQ11S as a multiple I.O. units for incomer. For outgoing feeders, bus section panel, bus coupler panel, we use AQ11 unit. AQ01 point sensors is also used here. The characteristics in these applications are dedicated arc protection relay per panel, clear fault location by dedicated LED, one sensor per compartment per LED, and the full selective protection concept. Standard scheme 3A for AQ110P, AQ101S will use standard scheme 1 for all outgoing feeders and the bus coupler unit. Scheme 2 for incomer subunit and the scheme 4 for bus section unit. Sensors are respectively at outgoing feeder compartment, circuit breaker compartment, main 1 bus, main 2 bus, and the reserve bus. The sensors are also located at uh, bus section and uh, bus coupler. Outgoing feeder breakers will be tripped by the T1 trip contacts of AQ11S. The bus section breakers will be tripped by T1 trip contact of uh, both AQ101 incomer subunit. Bus coupler breaker will be tripped by T2 trip contacts of both AQ101S incomer subunit. Incomer breaker is tripped by T1 of AQ110P. And the incomer upstream breakers is tripped by T2 of AQ110P.
The current signals can be measured by both AQ110P and uh, their high speed output one is sending the overcurrent signals to the all connected AQ101S units. There's a dedicated uh, light signal line for main one bus, main reserve bus, and the bus, main two bus. So when the arc fault happening at cable compartment, the incomer EQ110P measures the overcurrent and sends the overcurrent signals to the rest of the AQ101S unit, including the 40 feeder AQ101S unit. In this case, when arc fault occurs at outgoing feeder cable compartment, the 40, the 40 feeder unit now well now receives both current and the light signals so it can make the trips for this 40 feeder circuit breaker so in this case the rest of the system can be keep operating it doesn't matter which incomer measures the overcurrent the AQ101S unit will always receive the overcurrent signals from the high speed output one connection. For example, if the overcurrent is found by the right hand side AQ110P, the overcurrent signal will be sent from left or from the from right to the left via the binary output one to binary input one. Then the overcurrent signals will be sent via the high speed output one to AQ101S unit. It is a it is a local feeder fault, so none of the binary output signals for light for light signals will be activated in this case. Then when, when there's arc fault at, cable, uh, at uh, circuit breaker compartment, the overcurrent is measured by the incomer AQ110P. The current is sent out from the AQ110P to other side AQ110P and uh, all rest AQ11S unit. Arc fault is happening at the circuit breaker compartment. In this case, the incomer subunit will trip the, the bus section breaker and uh, the bus coupler breaker. And also trips the incomer main breakers at both sides. When arc fault is on main one bus, overcurrent is also measured. In this case, arc fault is on main one bus. In this case, we need to trip the incomer which connected to the main one. At the same time, we need to trip the, bu the main bus section breaker. If the arc fault happened at the main two bus, the overcurrent signal is sending out and received by AQ-11S and AQ-110P. The sensor detects the arc fault on the main two bus. It will need to trip the bus, uh, the main bus section breaker. At the same time, it will trip the bus coupler breaker. There's uh, no incomers connected to this uh, main two bus, so both incomers can still feed in to the rest of the system. 
when Akfort happened at the reserve bus, overcurrent is measured. Akfort is detected on reserve bus. The bus coupler will be tripped and the incomer connected to the reserve bus will be tripped. When arc fault is at the incomer cable compartment, there's a no overcurrent is measured in this case. So we will only need to trip the incomer, this incomer circuit breaker and the upstream circuit breaker. So that was all that I wanted to present today. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day and uh, see you next time.